So thank you, KV Kingdom, for the topic. Uh, he wants to know about roguelike RPGs, you know, uh, how to make one, what our favorite is. Uh, I, I, I haven't really played a lot of roguelikes. Those are the ones that are kind of procedurally generated, like, you know, um, the, the maps are a little different each time you play it. Uh, like mm -hmm. Diablo, I think, is roguelite. Uh, roguelike? 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 Mm -hmm. Which way is it? Is it roguelite or roguelike? Roguelike. Like. With a, it's roguelike. -E. L-I-K-E. Okay. okay. Yeah, with a K. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, in that case, um, okay, so while I'm not a big player of roguelikes, I, I do see that their appeal is there. And when you're when you're building them, I, I think the most important thing, in my opinion, would be to take into account um, the balancing of the player's progression. Because like, let's say, for example, let's talk about Borderlands, okay? Okay. Borderlands, while it's not roguelike, it's a loot shooter. So you get randomly generated loot as you play. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it's really a little too easy to unbalance that. You know, you might get a gun. Like the very first time I played Borderlands ever, I was playing Mordecai, okay? Mm -hmm. And I got really early on a high-leveled um, sniper rifle with uh, fire. I think the fire attached to it, combustion. Ooh! And it unbalanced the first maybe third of the game, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just lucked I out. I see that. So, yeah. you know, I think when you're making a roguelike, you kind of want to keep that in mind. You know, the, the randomness of it can work against you. Mm -hmm. You know, because suddenly it's like, oh, wow, I'm in a room that's been randomly generated with these enemies that are based off of, like, a leveled list. And then the next thing I know, um, I'm being swarmed and I'm not prepared. And there's no way I could have yeah. prepared myself. What do you think? No, I, I agree with you there. Um, if it's it's truly random, it's you, you you cannot account for the extremes. Yeah. And so when you're when you're coding these things, you need to put in there the the parameters. Okay, at this this stage of the game, only this can come up. Right. These enemies at this level and this loot. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, later stage of the game, you can have this set. Yeah. And forget about level one snakes. Right. Okay. Right, right. You know, and then at the latter stage of the game, then you have these enemies and this loot. There you go. So really rely on the leveled lists that uh, Bethesda mm -hmm. games like to use for loot and enemy progression. But keep a very tight control on it. I like that idea. Uh huh. Yeah. I like the idea. Uh, BG says, I find roguelites that each one is short are the ones I like most. I, I have to agree there too. I think if I was going to plan a roguelike, mm -hmm. first thing I would mm -hmm. do is I would make it so that a run is between, BG says five minutes. I would say between five and 15, you know, a quarter hour, a quarter hour. I, I would say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then get your spreadsheet and tightly balance each of those leveled lists from, you know, the first area to the second to the third, however long it mm -hmm. is. Um, here's another thought, Teal. Mm -hmm. What if we create a roguelike that's a co-op? Like, I believe there's that dwarven game. Uh, it's like you're a dwarven, um, what is it? Um, a miner. Somebody help okay. me out here. And I think it, that's a co-op match. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A roguelike co-op. Yeah. Hmm. Because it's, each thing is a little, each match is a little different while the goals remain basically the same. Yeah. So you'd have to make sure, well, yeah, that's interesting. You'd have to make sure that both players can see the same thing at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, as hmm. Jay and Burke are saying, Deep Rock Galactic and Hawk Zombie, our friend was playing that last night. There you go. Yeah. That's an example. See, to me, that would be something where you and your friends put forth a match the game is is roguelike really quick mm -hmm. but then you know uh, the balancing is there so the shorter the game the shorter the match the less of a chance of an in imbalance i i tend to i agree with that yeah, yeah. You, you make it short sweet to the point yeah. you have less of a chance of something fouling up real badly yeah if it's short yeah uh, in the inverse, Kuda Dude is saying, 
I enjoy the long-term roguelikes. I don't really enjoy the ones that are short runs. I want to play one save for two hours trying to beat the game. If I get killed, then I'm all right with it. I'm assuming that Kuda Dude's talking about a game like uh, Permadeath. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a longer run roguelike game, especially if Permadeath is a thing, then I would say you have to have a very tight control on the leveling, you know, the leveled, we're going to call them leveled lists, the leveled lists. Uh, yeah, you really are going to have to eliminate the extreme randomness if you're going to have a, a permadeath uh, run. Yeah, yeah. A rush like that. Yeah. Um, because it'd be too easy to <laughs> to run into something that uh, you can't handle mm -hmm. through no fault of your own, right, and then your right. your rush is, is defeated. I, I agree. I agree. Um, and, and it's not the same as Iron Manning something. You know, when you're mm -hmm. Iron Manning something, mm -hmm. you're going in specifically with the handicaps needed, usually you're like level one, in mm -hmm. order to make the, that run as hard as possible. Like uh, when people Iron Man Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, so, so I could, I, I could see that being a different and not really uh, a qualification for this discussion because we're just talking yeah. about planning roguelikes in general. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of upfront planning on the developer part. Yes, yes. A lot of planning those leveled lists, the loot, the enemies, uh, and the levels too. I mean, if you're going to procedurally uh -huh. generate a level, you got to take into what account like hiding places, treasure drops. I mean, you're the level design expert. What what kind of work would go into that? Wow. Um, what you're going to have to do is, is design each part of the level. Yeah. So that no matter which parts are put together to make your finished level they all work, will work seamlessly together yeah 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 i um because yeah you could i i you know let's let's say you're going to make a, a ghost game right okay and you want hiding places mm -hmm. well each of your little elements that you you, you are going to build for your ult for the the level to be put together mm -hmm. you have you need to have at least one hiding place in each of them because procedurally generated you don't know what the game is going to grab and put together right 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 i mean you could plant in a random seed you could say that you know have at least one or two of these particular things i mean you can put that in the the algorithm that generates the level but you're right you're right there has to be something somewhere mm -hmm. that that enforces a again in the for instance that it's a like a phasmophobia style you know, ghost hunting game, right. at least one hiding place. I agree. I agree completely. Well, yeah, every, every part of the level, every part that could potentially be grabbed to make that level should have two elements. Ah, I see what you're saying. So for example, if, if you're going to have like, um, you have height, so we're going to we'll go with your hypothetical game. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. hiding places. There needs to be at least two of them that are represented in that level. Um, health drops, at least two of them, that kind of thing. So that when you're creating this level, assuming it's a medium-sized map, no matter what, mm -hmm. at least two of each of those design elements are put in. Yeah, or you could say at least one. One hiding place and and uh, one health drop region, whatever. Yeah, yeah. F for a smaller size map. In fact, mm -hmm. it, because yeah. let because if you don't do that, there is a chance that the game is going to put together a level, and there are no hiding places. Yeah. Or one hiding place for an entire level. That that's just crazy. There you go. So you would want to. Here's another thing to kind of answer the let's create a roguelike question. Um, for the sizes of your maps, have minimums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is you still have to have that randomly uh, generated dungeon be aesthetically mm -hmm. pleasing. It can't just be boxes. Mm -hmm. um, Boo Boo and I have played Forewarned, and while I like it and I want to play it more with, with you guys, it, it is fun. It's basically Phasma with mummies. The, the mm -hmm. levels themselves are, I don't want to say they're dry because they're procedurally generated, but it's very much a tomb. And when you've seen the interior of one tomb... They kind of all look the same. You know, sarcophagus is here, mm -hmm. urns there. And while I understand that thematically works, it's still not as visually attractive as it could be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
or th think about uh, way back in the, uh, the PS1 era, mm -hmm. um, the Chrysler building in Parasite E. Yeah, basically that was a, a roguelike. Uh-huh. But it was um, boxes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just corridors. Right. Okay. You have a straightaway corridor or you have a corridor that turns the right, turns to the left. Yeah. Or a T intersection yeah. or a four-way intersection. But it was it was all designed the same. I agree. Yeah, and it was you had mm -hmm. you had the same materials mm -hmm. and uh the same lighting. Yeah. It was it was never at any point ever. It was never at any point a um a building. It was just corridors. There was no place mm -hmm. like this is a coffee center. This is a lounge. This is an office. When they right. could have done that. Nope. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have they could have. And, and chat, especially BG, is talking about things like RPG Makers, Generator Dungeons, yes, uh, and Daggerfall. Daggerfall mm -hmm. had tens of thousands of dungeons, and they were all procedurally generated, and it was really rough. <laughs> yeah. So your job nowadays is to do all the stuff we're talking about on a level design level, but also make it aesthetically pleasing. Um, you could have things like uh, each room will have certain types of decorations, like it randomly chooses mm -hmm. walls. Uh, so this wall in this room will have curtains. Uh, mm -hmm. This wall in this room will have, you know, exterior windows with torn shades and then have, yeah. you know, interior spots where certain things will be. Like, you know, in this room with a, a grid space of three by three, whatever your units are, mm -hmm. you can randomly spawn in these areas things like uh, couches. Because um, I'm, I'm thinking a haunted house, uh, a cabinet, yeah. etc. And you'd have to really test how that procedural generation works, but I think it would be really effective. I think it would be too. Yeah. In fact, yeah. There is a game. I'm planning on getting it because it's on sale. Um, it's called. Uh -huh. It's a VR game called The Dark Method. And while it's basically a Jim Butcher, Harry Dresden style shooter, it comes with a roguelike uh, haunted house crawl. And ah. And from what I saw, it looked really good really really good you know so yeah yeah I, I think hopefully this helps you all out on ways that you can plan a roguelike they're, they're fun they can be fun they're, they're a lot of fun when they're well constructed yeah yeah it's something that you can play for hours and hours and hours because each experience is different yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. well let us know in the comments what you think and uh, would you create a roguelike? And if so, what would you do that's different from what we're suggesting? Or what things have mm -hmm. you all thinking of that we haven't thought of? We want to know. We want to know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We want to know. So if you like what you saw, lay the smack down the like button below. Subscribe to our channel. Consider supporting us on Patreon. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Discord. And we'll see you in the next video. See you next time.